This is the Tony Hinchcliffe Pilot Podcast. So this is when you figure out what you want this to be. I have to decide right now? No. At, oh. By next Monday. By next Monday. Oh, at okay. At 8 p.m. Cool. I gotcha. So you guys might witness history. Redman coming to you live from the Comedy Mothership here in Austin, Texas for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hitchcliffe! <laughs> Who's ready for the best fucking night of their lives tonight, huh? Yippee! Make some noise for Red Band, everybody. Hey, everybody! We've been doing this show for nine years, 11 months, and two weeks. You're at the number one live podcast in the world right now. You guys know where you are? <laughs> Brought to you by the Red Rose, the Yellow Rose, Austin Security Guard Service, and Gel Blaster. And also, Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey, which presents the best damn band in the land, the Kill Tony Band, everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's James Atkins joining us on the drums tonight, one of the best musicians on planet Earth. Filling in for the great Michael Gonzalez. That's Paul Deemer on the horns right there, everybody. This is Matt Muling on the electric guitar, as always. The leader of the band, the first Austin musician to put this whole thing together, the great John Dees on the keys right behind me. JohnDees.com. And of course, the backbone, D Madness, right here on the bass guitar, everyone. A lot of fun stuff happening, a very fun episode plan. Before we start, here's a little bit more from the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode available for you here right now. Hey, y'all, it's official, it's announced, it's out there. My largest stand-up tour of my entire life. All the biggest theaters in all my favorite cities. Toronto, Canada, Royal Oak, Michigan, San Antonio, Texas, Chicago, Illinois, Charlotte, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, Columbus, Ohio, Kansas City, Missouri, Indianapolis, Indiana, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Tysons, Virginia, just outside of D.C., Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, Minnesota, e Youngstown, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio, San Francisco, California, Sacramento, California, San Diego, California, Phoenix, Arizona, New York, New York, Clearwater, Florida, and Jacksonville, Florida. Tickets available at TonyHinchcliffe.com. Come see the crazy Texas fucking stand-up that I've been working on. You're not going to believe it. Let's have some fun. <laughs> Hey, y'all. Do you know that you're not getting everything that you pay for when you watch Netflix without using ExpressVPN? Get 
it together. ExpressVPN lets you change your online location so that you can control where you want Netflix to think you're located. They have almost 100 different server locations, so you can gain access to thousands of new shows. This works with many other streaming services too, BBC iPlayer, YouTube, and more. I've watched a lot of shows using ExpressVPN on my Netflix. I remember getting to watch The Last Dance about Michael Jordan and the championship Chicago Bulls team months before everybody else because it was airing in other countries at the time. Red Band, you know all about this. Yeah, and ExpressVPN is not like other VPNs because it has blazing fast speeds. You could stream in HD with zero buffering. It's compatible with all your devices like phones, laptops, media consoles, smart TVs, and more. And it encrypts all your data. ExpressVPN has the added benefit of encrypting your data so you can browse the web securely. No doubt about it. Be smart. Stop paying full price for streaming services and only getting access to a fraction of their content. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash kill Tony. Don't forget to use our link at expressvpn.com slash kill Tony to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash kill Tony. Hey y'all, I have a question. What's more American than a bald eagle? The 4th of July is almost here, and that means a couple of things. Barbecues, pool parties, and last but not least, glizzies. And it just so happens that the sponsors of today's show, Manscaped, are making sure that all the glizzy gladiators across the nation are groomed for battle on America's birthday. From sea to shining sea, join over 8 million pube patriots worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with our code KILLTONY at Manscaped. Com. Talk about an American dream. Am I right, Red Band? Yeah, I don't know how many times growing up I always used to shave just using a horrible razor and I would nick my junk. Oh, man, that's horrible. But it's only right to start with America's favorite, the Performance Package 4.0. And this package is going to help you not nick your little junk. Inside the package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker, Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver, Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a Travel Bag to hold all your goodies. First off, the Lawnmower 4.0, you can call yourself an American without a lawnmower. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. This trimmer is designed for below the belt, but has been known to carve out exquisite 4th of July mullets as well. Their crop preserver ball deodorant and crop reviver ball toner will change the way you approach your hygiene routine. Those bad boys go together better than Maverick and Goose. Oh my goodness. That's right. They even threw in two gifts, anti-chafing boxers and the shed travel bag. Bring your crotch comfort to a whole nother level. And for my diehard patriots who want to rock a dirty stash or goatee by the pool, look no further than Manscaped's brand new Beard Hedger Pro Kit, including the Beard Hedger Tremor. You'll be looking like the total American dream. Take your freedom bells to the next level by going to manscaped.com and getting 20% off with free shipping with our discount code KILLTONY. Get your independence back this Independence Day and unlock your confidence with Manscaped. Hey, y'all. With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. This summer, HelloFresh is here to take the work out of eating well, reach your goals with delicious calorie-smart and protein-smart lunch and dinner options, plus new vegan recipes, too. Calorie-smart. Red band. Need dinner ready like now? Look for quick and easy recipes on the HelloFresh menu, including fast and fresh options for just under 15 minutes or less. I actually love HelloFresh. I have this problem where I always go out to eat, get fast food, and with HelloFresh, I get all the portions made for me so I can quickly put together a meal in 15 minutes or less. That's right. No matter your lifestyle, you'll always find delicious recipes on the HelloFresh menu, like pescatarian, veggie, and much more. You can even swap proteins and sides to make a recipe just the way you like it. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Tony6 and use the code TONY16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. One more time, go to HelloFresh.com slash TONY16 and use code TONY16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. 
Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to send it? We want to talk to you about one of Kill Tony's newest sponsors and the goddamn most American supplement company out there, Send It Sups. If you're anything like me, you want to be at the top of your game. You want to crush your goals, dominate your competition, and come out on top every single time. Well, with Send It Sups, you can do just that. Send It Supplements was founded with one mission in mind, to caffeinate as many hardworking Americans as possible. They've chosen the newest and best way to energize with dippable pre-workout because shit. Shaker cups suck. Founded from a fire base in Syria, Send It contains eight pouches per tin, patriotically packed with 300 milligrams of caffeine per pouch. And the best part, no water equals no bathroom runs, no face melting jitters either. You send it to crush your PRs in the gym and in life. These supplements are made right here in the good old US of A using only the finest all American ingredients. That means you can trust that what you're putting in your body is pure, potent, and powerful. And even though there is a soldier on the logo, Send it is for anyone that uses caffeine to accomplish their goals. Teachers, cops, firemen, shift workers, and all the hardworking Americans. Whether you're a hardcore athlete, a fitness enthusiast, or just someone who wants to feel their best, Send It Sups has something for you. From pre-workout to post-workout, fat burners to muscle builders, they got it all. You see us drinking coffee every single Monday on the show. We love caffeine. You probably love caffeine too. So what are you waiting for? Don't settle for second best. Don't compromise on quality. Go to senditsups.com and use promo code TONY for a special discount at checkout. That's senditsups.com, promo code TONY. And always send it like a true champion. Do you think that podcasts are going to become a big thing or no? <laughs> Coming to you from ACL This is fucking amazing. This is incredible. Congratulations, Tony, on having one of the most creative shows in the entire world. It is so much fun. Are you guys ready to start tonight's episode or what? You know, one of the things that I love about this show is uh, the people that have done it before, the, some of the most established comedians in comedy store history. This is truly, your guest tonight is who I truly believe is one of the greatest stand-up comedians, not to mention, without a doubt, one of, the, by far, the best female stand-up comedians on planet Earth. She helped me get my job at the comedy store 16 years ago, changing my life forever, an eye for talent like none other, trained directly underneath the late, great Mitzi Shore. Opener for Andrew Dice Clay, headlining the Sony Hall in New York City, June 16th and 17th. Ladies and gentlemen, Philly's own comedy store legend, Eleanor Kerrigan, everybody. Make some fucking noise for Eleanor Kerrigan. There are some hoes in this house. She just made an innocent Saudi Sorry. Arabian boy come in his pants in the front row. <laughs> she comes out guns a-blazing, always on fire. That's my other job. <laughs> one of my favorite humans, Yay. one of the greatest human beings I know. I uh, love one you. One of the funniest people on planet Earth and one of the greatest guests in the history of the show. She's got a filthy, Philly dirty... Philly in the fucking house. Yeah, there is. Fucking... This is fucking... I heard them. The South Philly, ho. Oh, Fuck shit. Fuck yeah, we'll fight this whole room. There is. They really There's are. There's more hoes I can in this smell house. the yeast infection from here. There really is a bunch of South Philly girls. That's me. Oh, that's you. <laughs> I'm oh. kidding. I can't get bread anymore. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Dead egg. Straight gluten. Uh, some fun stuff happening. We're going to have a blast tonight. Eleanor, you've done the show many, 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 many times. It. And now over 200 Holy souls stand shit. in the back alleyway Should hoping I that I here? pull one of their names out. And they get oh, 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 60 oh, 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 seconds on this stage if that happens to impress us with their stand-up comedy. Maybe it's a local legend looking to make a big break. Maybe it's somebody's first time. Maybe it's somebody that just left their family. We've had a few of these. Some people have been abandoning their families to come to kill runaways. Tony for a shot. <laughs> Literally. It has been it. happening almost every week at some point. Uh, they get 60 seconds. You know their time is up and you hear the sound of a kitten. That means they have to wrap it up then or else they bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. 
which interrupts their set. Yes. It's very, very loud. Very fun stuff. Uh, amazing, amazing times ahead. Are you guys ready to start tonight's show or what? Woo! I'm going to pull who the second comedian's name is. We're going to pass that along because we're going to start with one of our regulars, everybody. If you've been following this story, you must be enthralled. Anything can happen any week. Sometimes he comes out and fucking shreds. Sometimes he's been on a coke bender. We found him when he was broke, living in his van. He now wears the same Rolex that me and Joe Rogan wear. He balls out of control, selling out every weekend, but now he has a drug problem. Sing it if you know the words. This is Hans Kim. You know, if we defund the police, then every weekend we have to go out on 6th Street and spread horse shit by hand. (laughs) That was a joke. Uh, Love it here in Austin because you guys have a school for every disability. School for the blind, school for the deaf, a school for Mexicans. Such a Texas solution. Put them in a school. Maybe they can learn to not be blind. (laughs) Or Mexican. (laughs) I was just in Seattle recently. Everyone dresses in layers in Seattle. They all look like they're trying to fly spirit without paying for a (laughs) carry-on. That's why they're so socially awkward. It's because there's so much layers in between them and sex. Like, ooh, you piqued my interest. Maybe you could get to the upper inner layer. (laughs) Well, that's my time. Thank you, guys. Hans Kim. Hans Kim. How do you feel? I feel amazing, Tony. You do? I do. Uh, Comedy has been amazing for me. (laughs) And... (laughs) Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Sounds like one of those drug weekends. Am I right? I did a couple grams of mushrooms. (laughs) Oh, okay. That's it? Yeah. None of the hard stuff? No, none of the fun stuff. Let let me ask you this. I said the hard stuff. I don't think that stuff's fun. But your (laughs) girlfriend does. Your girlfriend who's levels hotter than you. We talk about this every week. Does she tempt you on the regular with hard drugs, Hans? Uh, She just makes it look fun and hot. But uh, (laughs) she never pushes it on me. Okay. Did you do mushrooms with her this weekend? Yes. And what do you guys do when you do mushrooms? Uh, we just like eat Whataburger and stare at her poster in a room. Oh. You're doing it wrong, man. <laughs> is she one of those strippers that used to come see him? No, no. This is a. Uh, this is a. What does she do? Hans? She's in. Uh, she has an office job. She works from home. Uh, she works in. An, she just does computer stuff. Answers emails. Uh, uh, supply chain stuff. So she works from home. So you guys spend a lot of time together. Is that right? Yes. What do you, how do you guys pass the time? We, uh, we know we, that you're very insecure. You're always afraid that she's going to go suck somebody's dick for some reason. You talk about <laughs> this on the regular. Has that happened this week? Were you insecure at all this week? I was a little insecure this weekend. Yeah. I, uh, Tell us about that moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I was like, hey, come downtown. And she's like, okay, I'll go to Rainy Street. I was like, okay, that's not where I'm at. And then, uh... (laughs) Right. (laughs) Could make you nervous. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, sort of looked through her phone that night. Whoa, Hans. Just because you make the... What the fuck was that? Thank you. Let's, let's, Let's limit it. I already have to... Okie dokie. All right. My worst nightmares are coming true, everybody. Two people with soundboards stepping on jokes now. Welcome to the new sound effect show, everybody. This is, used to be a comedy show. Now it's just surprise noises at any point. Stepping on unbelievably fast, witty fucking jokes that I can't do now because the opportunity has passed. And John, when you do it, when you do it, I can't yell. Okay, all right. <laughs> this is great. This is what happened with the old band. They, yeah, this yeah. Is, they nice. used to, they, that's how it started. They Jeremiah just start, 101. They go, okay, well, now he's going to say they don't like it, so now I'm going to do more of it. No, it's okay. So, I was going to say, just because you make the iPhones doesn't mean you get to go through them, Hans. <laughs> Still work. 
Still got it. Brought it back. Never give up. John Cena says so. <laughs> okay. So you went through the phone. What did you find? Give us the real tea here, Hans. No one serves tea better than Asian people. I want to... <laughs> hot green tea. Let's go. Mm, I found, nice and healthy. I found a text message from an un, unregistered uh, number. Uh-huh. Unsaved uh, number. Yes. Right. And she was like, I just did it to get free drinks. What did it say? What did the message Said, say? From hey, nice to meet you. Are you there? Why aren't you responding? <laughs> wow. What time of the night were these messages at? Like 1 a.m. Oh, oh yeah, that's fuck. The, that's the danger zone right there. It could be business. Yeah. <laughs> is is she the reason why we have supply chain issues? Like like. She, <laughs> wow, Hans. What else is going on in your wild world? Anything else exciting? I recently got an STD test. Oh wow! Uh, I, it would have been a lot funnier without the word test afterwards. <laughs> I was very excited there. <laughs> so, what made you get the test? You've been with the same girl for, what, about six months? Yeah, okay. I mean, I did get a text message that was like, a former partner of yours says she has STD, or she has AIDS and monkeypox. Go get tested. <laughs> Anonymous service. Holy shit. <laughs> That's hilarious. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a new phone and start texting all my buddies. That. <laughs> great idea. That's hilarious. That's a great thing to do. JK, new number. It's Tony. <laughs> just, give, just give him an hour, right? Let him sweat it a little bit. So you got a text that said AIDS and monkeypox. Yeah. And you were like, I gotta go get tested. <laughs> yeah. You How immediately believed it. I, uh, you know, better safe than sorry. You know, there's no downside to getting tested. You should all get tested. No yep. one loves taking tests more than Asian people, <laughs> am I right? It's an unbelievable. So everything come up clean? Everything's clean. Yeah, I, there you go. <laughs> yeah, but isn't, isn't that something about your relationship that you actually thought you might have AIDS or monkeypox? <laughs> I was just going through the Rolodex of strippers that I kissed. <laughs> kissed. <laughs> kissed, yes. That is how, that is how. Oh my God, how does he get laid at all? <laughs> uh, Hans, we absolutely love you. Every single week you get the show started with a bang somehow, one way or another, whether it's through your minute or your unbelievably honest interviews. We love you. Make some noise for Hans Kim, everybody. Thank you. That was Hans Kim. That was Hans Kim. That was Hans Kim. That was Hans Kim. I pulled a name out of the bucket before without anybody noticing, and it is the name of Nicholas Sapaglia, ladies and gentlemen. The first name out of the bucket. We know him. He's been on the show before. He works here at the Mothership. One more time for Nicholas, everybody. I work here. You guys all saw it. I was standing on the stairs. When I got hired here, they said, Nick, you're a door guy, but you're also a comedian, so you have to treat the guests nice and be charismatic and joke with them and razz them a bit. So earlier, I saw this guy walk out of the other room with this weird Indiana Jones-looking hat, and I said, hey, man, I'll meet you at the Temple of Doom later. <laughs> he looks at me and goes, is that the best you got, bitch? <laughs> like, he didn't have to call me a bitch. <laughs> So he went to the bathroom and then I got mad and he came back and goes, what else you got? I said, nice hat, faggot. <laughs> I'm currently writing a book. It's about growing up with childhood asthma. It's called My Cough. Nicholas Sapeglia. What's up, Tony? What's up, guys? Welcome back. It's been What's a while up? since you've been on the show. Yeah, a little bit. Absolutely. It's my first time here in this room. Absolutely. M multiple times at Balkan Gas Company. Yeah. Your first time at the mothership, where you are a full-time employee. How do you like it? It's awesome, man. It's, uh, it's definitely life-changing getting the job. It's pretty awesome working here. Like, I don't know, we haven't talked about it too much, but like I had a career and I have a house in California that I like gave up to move out what here. What was the career? Uh, I was like 
family business. I was going to take over an auto glass business. Auto glass. Yeah, pretty successful okay. business, but oh, yeah. I used to bet on myself. I moved out here about a year and a half ago and couldn't be happier. Wow, look at that. Incredible. So you're doing stand-up. You're working here. Mm -hmm. What are you doing for fun? Did you ever get over the asthma? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, been going out to like Barton Springs and checking out live music and hanging out here at Mitzi's after work and... And just been working a lot and doing performing a lot, so it's been. I've got a full plate, you know. It's okay. been good. I just got a cat. You just got a cat? Yeah. Wow. Okay. You live by yourself? No, I live with uh, my girlfriend and a roommate. Okay. Mm -hmm. How how many bedrooms? Two bedrooms. Two yeah. bedrooms. Mm -hmm. So you and the girlfriend are in one room, the roommate's in the other. Yeah. How did the roommate feel about the cat appearing out of nowhere? He likes <laughs> cats. He doesn't mind. I talked to him about it. Okay. Hey, What'd you it. name the cat? Uh, Tobias. Why Tobias? I've been watching a lot of Arrested Development lately. <laughs> okay. Never seen it. Eleanor, what do you think about this young buck? I, I think he's amazing. Thank um, you. Uncomfortable, but amazing. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I don't know. Should I say hi? <laughs> 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 I'm just going by the book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you gave up a house. Which tent is yours outside? <laughs> Uh, I just Sorry, I, rent, I'm a bitch. I rent it I actually, so I still have it. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> you got room? Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit. Back in California, you want to live in Fresno, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. How long you been with your girlfriend? Uh, June will be like a year. Okay. What does she do? Uh, she works here in box office. Oh wow! Ooh. Look at you guys sneaking yeah. around Rogan's Club, fucking. <laughs> You guys hook up against like a brick, the brick wall or something? Of course something? not. Come on, man. If you did, would you tell me? Not on stage. That's right. <laughs> where would you go, though, if you were going to hook up? If you up? were going yeah. to do it, where would you do it? Great question, yes, yes, Red yes, Band. Yes, yes, yes. Well, if we wanted anybody to see it and watch pretty much anywhere in the building because there's cameras <laughs> yeah, in every exactly. corner. There really is. But Unless you know where there's not cameras. Yeah. I, I do, but I'm not going to blow it up here. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas, what else about you? What have we not talked about since you've been on the show a few times? Mm. Give us some fun fact about Nicholas Apeglia. Um, I like You're to paint. It calms me down. I got into that over um, got into that over pandemic. I haven't done it much since I moved out here because I've been so busy. But I was selling paintings for a good amount of money back home before I moved out here. That's what got me a lot of. Wow! Savings look at you. You here. gave up a whole life of success in Fresno, California, to come <laughs> here. <laughs> Better to be a small fish in a big pond than a big fish in a small pond. But okay. I'm going to be a big fish out here, too. So, Wow. You are, your voice makes me want to take a fucking nap. I got to tell you, Nicholas, it's unbelievable. Was... Congratulations. You got pulled Thank out of the bucket. You. Very Thank fun you. set. Woo! Red I, Band. I would love to have you on the secret show Thursday at sunset. Oh, yeah, You've already there. got all the joke books. Nicholas Apeglia, there he goes. Uh, make some noise for your next comedian, A.J. Valentine, everybody. Pull them out of the bucket. A.J. Valentine. Yeah. Fucking room! <laughs> Dude, this is it, man! <laughs> Guys, this is it, bro. We're here! Or I mean, I'm here, I'm, I'm, this is it, bro, you know? <laughs> yeah. I've been, uh, I've been working on my social skills lately. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of the LeBron James of uh, not making women uncomfortable, which is, which is pretty cool, you know? We're here, man. <laughs> Fucking happy. I was like doing this shit back there, like, all right, they're fucking like five minutes and then get you on. There was like a guy in a suit. That's fucking it, man. Yeah. yeah, dude. I've, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I've been, uh, I've been doing some cat calling lately, you know? But I've been doing some not making women uncomfortable cat calling. I've been like, I've been like, I don't want them to hear me, so I've been like, I, I, I think you're really pretty. I, really, I think your skin and hair is pretty. All right, AJ Valentine uh, using all of his time. 
Hello, AJ. How are you? What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> Something. Let's get to it. I'm really excited. Okay. How old are you? I'm 24. 24 years old. How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? Uh, well, a little over two years. I two say. years, yeah. and that's your minute? Yeah. <laughs> Came out guns ablaze. Is that your best minute? Oh, uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. You did your best joke in that minute? Probably. Which one was it? It was the one where... Hang on. Hang, it was Two one, years in the game. Let's yeah. talk about it. It was the one where I was like... I was like, I'm the LeBron James of making, not making women uncomfortable, you know? And Got then it. I fucking... Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, AJ. <laughs> where you been doing this comedy at for the last two years? Uh, I, I, uh, I, did, I did my first two years in Portland, Oregon, uh, and I had a lot of fun there. And okay. Then, shut wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I then, can tell it's Portland because your act is a dumpster fire. So. <laughs> uh, Stand over there by the red X. <laughs> You're really getting a little close. Nope, the other fucking direction, uh, AJ. Thank you so much. I love it. Okay, AJ, what do you do for a living? Uh, I am uh, trying to find a job. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> you, you live here now? Uh, yeah, I did the whole thing, man. I'm like, yeah, I just gotta do it. So. So like, the answer is yes to yeah. that question. <laughs> you yeah. moved here. Yeah. How long ago did you move here? Uh, uh, almost three months. Three months. Yeah. And you haven't had a job since you got here? Well, I mean, I've been trying to uh, like. <laughs> you could say anything right now. I have no no one knows what the fuck you're talking about. It's okay. Two years I'm... in the entertainment business, man. <laughs> we have years. no idea what you're trying to say. The question was What was the question? <laughs> Do you have a job? Have you had a job? Are you looking for a job? How are you surviving in I Austin, mean, Texas? I'm, I don't have a job and I'm kind of looking for a job. Do you have money saved up? Yeah, X amount, you know. <laughs> God, you are the worst. <laughs> Somehow, your all your awkwardness. There's nothing likable about it. It's amazing. <laughs> like it should be likable, but it's not. You have like bad timing. Have cool. people have people no. have people told you that you're funny? Yeah. Who? It's happened. Who? Like, what is their name and their numbers? Like, I want to contact them <laughs> and tell them that they've recently been uh, near monkeypox and AIDS. <laughs> Holy shit, AJ Valentine. This is absolutely incredible. You did your best minute here tonight. Yeah. It was a real struggle. Uh, how much time do you think you have all together? Two years in the game. Oh, I got a, I got a good... Oh, you're so annoying. I can't deal with you for another minute. And that, that noise that you make to start every answer is fucking unbearable. I, I, I have never even heard anything like it before. I'm encouraging you to quit right now. I think when you find that job, I think you should quit. I don't see it happening for you. Eleanor, you knew me when I was 24. I was already two years old. Right, but you're not autistic. I don't think he's autistic. Uh, no, 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 no. no. We, we have a rule around here. We don't call stupid said, people autistic. No. Yeah. That's yeah. not stupid. Like, he's nervous. Eleanor, that's If a fetal, train came by, he'd be loving it. That's fetal what? alcohol syndrome. No, that's, I love him. Your, par good. your parents have heavy drinkers? Uh, no, no. No? <laughs> All right. What do you think's wrong with you? Have you been diagnosed as anything? Yeah, I went to a special ed high school. What? Special yeah, at high school, but did, did the doctors tell you you were something, or did well, they just I put you there? I got in on a technicality. It was just like ADHD and shit. <laughs> okay. Um, so that... it was a it was a fun time. Ninety kids. Okay. Yeah. What do you like to do for fun when you're not absolutely fucking bombing? <laughs> what else do you do? Fucking killing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No one believes you. No one yeah. believes you. No Keep one. That Red band's oh, yeah. clapping because he's also half retarded. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, what else, what do you do, like hobbies, anything? You don't have a job, you don't have jokes, so I'm trying to find out anything about you right now. You're being interviewed I'm on just, a live podcast. It's okay, I'm just trying to kill it in every way, shape, there or There he form. goes, everybody, AJ Valentine. Yeah. Not even a little joke book. He's hitting the road, everybody. Absolutely unbearable. This show is not for everybody. You have to be able to answer questions. A very, very tough challenge. And for those of you that think, oh, he's special, oh, he's autistic, oh, there's something wrong with him. Well, my friends, I right now am about to introduce you to a comedian that's literally fucking retarded. 
and he's about to destroy golden ticket winner from Toronto, Canada, Kill Tony Famous, Jared Nathan, everybody. The one and only Jared motherfucking Nathan. As you may notice, I have trouble with the letter B. It's how my favorite things start with the letter B. Baseball! Barbecue! Benches! Ball grips! Basket of Robins! The list goes on! We've been here all night! I love my cat! Stay some. There's some positives about having a cat. I get to. Wake up with the ass in my face every morning. <laughs> There's some mm, negatives about having a cat. I keep confusing catnip for weed. <laughs> Cats go crazy for a catnip. I just like smelly pussy. What did I tell you? Jared Nathan, everybody, he does it all the time. Golden ticket winner, 100% kill ratio, 100% good set since his very first set. Every single set, every single interview, the Woo! fucking guy gets it. Not leaning on excuses like autistic or ADHD. No, you're... Fuck that shit! Yeah, exactly. That's fucking nothing. I've my fucking life, Tony! That's every... Right. It's nothing to you. That's like yeah. a fucking ingrown nail or something. It's just not even that big of a deal. ADHD and autism are the, the least of your fucking worries. Tony, fucking I'm in the nothing. splash zone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he does get a little... It's a... Uh, he's, he's a little, little, little oh, squirter. You're good. I like it. Gets a little squirty over there. He gets excited. Stand on the red X, Jared. That's, uh, that's the... Okay, Tony. Squirt okay, up. all right. How's it going, Jared? Oh, great set, my friend. You did it again. Tell us about how your week in Austin's going. My week been pretty good. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Okay. Excellent. I've been just hanging out, taking walks, smoking weed. Absolutely. I went to the Seattle FC game. The Seattle, soccer game? The soccer game, yeah. Yes. That was fun. Uh -huh. So I took magic mushrooms like an idiot. Ooh. And went to a fucking soccer game. <laughs> like a fucking idiot. Tell us tell us why that was an idiot move. Explain to us what happened. Because okay. everybody else was focusing on the game. <laughs> and I was focusing not on the game. <laughs> right. I was in my old, my old fucking... Yeah. Alex in Wonderland shit. Yeah. Tell us what you saw eating mushrooms at the soccer game. Explain to us what goes on. Because I know what mushrooms does to me. I can't even fucking imagine what it must be like in your fucking brain. Because, like, the shit that I see when I'm on mushrooms, I feel like you already see sober. <laughs> fucking unicorns and shit. And fucking, I'm like, I'm f f f f f f fucked up, guys. Uh... <laughs> So I, I can't even imagine. Oh, the fucking... Oh, oh, oh. The lights. Motherfucking L-I-G-C-H-T-S. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> fucking nailed it. Spelling beat champion, Jared Nathan. I didn't know there was a Z in lights, but we figured it out. Whatever. Okay. I make my own shit up, Tony. I love it. Uh, no one digs it more than me, my friend. Tell us more. So you're at the soccer game. Shit's going down. Who won? You did. I always win. Uh, I think Seattle won. I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All I know is I think Seattle scored and 
Everybody made some fucking noise, and I woke the fuck up. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Did that was good? Were you shaking by yourself? Were you spinning in circles? Like, what were you doing? I was sitting in my seat saying, no more, no more, no more, no more. No wait, more, wait, no wait, more. wait. No hold more, on. No more. Pause everything. Hold on. You're, you're, hold on. Hold, 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 hold on. Hold all the other thoughts coming here. You were sitting in your seat and you were saying something out loud and that something was what? No more, no more, no more, no more. No more, no more, no more, no more. What the fuck is that? I have no idea. But that's what, no more normal, no more. No places, Tony. No more normal. No more, no more. Oh, wow. Play with words. I play with words when I'm high. Dude, Tony, he's so lucky he gets to shroom anywhere he wants. No one's going to say shit. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Go, let's go. A hundred percent. Oh, my God. No more normal. No more. No more. No more. No more. Yeah. Did, have you ever thought those words in that succession before? It just, no, it just came to me. Holy shit. What else? Tell us more about this trip. All I was thinking also is, why the fuck did I choose a sock game to do mushrooms? Right. <laughs> yeah. Why, why was I outside? <laughs> I don't know. Why did you choose a soccer game? Who'd you go to the... How'd you get there? <laughs> <laughs> Were you even at a soccer game? I was. Was it a Little League game or was it Austin <laughs> FC? It was Austin FC. You're just I, tripping balls. I went with... What did? He what? saw me tripping. <laughs> this guy? This guy saw me and and Jesus Josh. I want to Jesus Josh. Okay. You just ran into them there? We made a plan. <laughs> we had a plan and uh, I I had a, I had swim pills lying around and I thought it was a good idea, but obviously it wasn't. Have you done mushrooms before? Yes. Okay. I've done them the Concerts and other places. Right. But this is your first time doing it at a soccer game. Yes, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, all right. I, We're not recommended. All right, all right. We got you. Can we I got you. Yes, question? Eleanor Kerrigan. I just I have a quick question. Were you feeling normal? So you were saying no more normal? I'm, I'm just curious. Like, were you seeing things? Are you Bert Kreischer's kid? I was some things. I wanted to move things out of the past. I was saying... Just move on, you know? <laughs> okay. I would think, yeah, I don't know. I love it. I'm proud of you. I always feel like I'm normal, right, Tony? Yeah, well, I guess. Were you doing know. drugs? So everybody was on mushrooms that you went okay, with. Okay, good. Yeah. How'd you get home? Uh, I got a ride home. <laughs> From one of the friends that were on mushrooms? Yes. Okay. Anything else exciting happened this week, Jared Nathan? I went to Oklahoma yesterday. Okay, what'd you do in Oklahoma? I just did a show in Oklahoma. Did you drive there? I had a ride from a friend. Okay, and you did a, just a show in Oklahoma. Yeah. H how'd that go? It was fucking awesome. Yeah. And okay. I, got, I had a lot of fun afterwards. Okay, what'd you do afterwards? Went to the strip club. Uh-oh, yeah. look out. <laughs> Absolutely. This time, Tony, I actually spent money, so it was fun. Right. Normally, you just make it rain when you're talking, so it's very exciting to hear. That. How'd the strip club go for you? Did you get a lap dance? Yeah, we got a couple. It was fun. Okay. Did you fall in love with any of the strippers? Is there, I learned, is there some girl out there, I right? I a long time ago, to, don't to do that. So. Right. No don't more. Don't do that. No don't more normal, normal, no more. Right, exactly. That's not normal. Right. Did you say it? <laughs> Did you talk to any of the strippers? What's your go-to line when uh, talking to a stripper? Give us an example of what you say. Do you ever lean into your condition? You ever just like, Durr! or like, is it like, hello, how are you? I'm a businessman. I I have so much money. Are you doing? <laughs> Let's go. For a <laughs> Wait, what? What I want to smack that ass. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Jared Nathan, you're a goddamn legend. You're a fucking monster. Everybody loves you. You're a freak of nature. 
There he goes, the great Jared Nathan, everyone. We're going to keep it moving along. Make some noise for Andre Rodriguez, everybody. He's the next comedian, yep. Here he is one more time for Andres Rodriguez, everyone. Good to be here, Austin. I get to do this today, and I get to go on vacation tomorrow, y'all. I'm going to Hawaii for the first time, yeah. To get an abortion for the second time. Let's talk about it. And you might be tightening up. I just want to let you know where I stand on a woman's right to choose. Uh, that is on a surfboard. That's exactly where... <laughs> I know, it's gonna be a weird trip though, you know? I can imagine getting off the plane, the flight attendant's gonna ask me, what brings you to Hawaii, sir? Business or pleasure? Well, pleasure brought me here to handle some business, so. Came to the Aloha State where hello also means goodbye. Yeah. Uh, so growing up, uh, I was good at spelling bees. I was actually really good at spelling bees, but I wasn't good enough to beat Indian kids in spelling bees because as it turns out, there is no harder word to spell than an Indian person's name. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen their names? They are superfluous, and I can use both of those in a sentence. Nidarshan Anandasavam's name is superfluous. Thank you. Okay. All right. Andre Rodriguez. Am I saying that correct? Andres. Andreas yes. Rodriguez. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. Let's get into it, Andreas. Now, you are a, a comedy photographer. That I am. Yeah. And you started that at Vulcan uh, two and a half years ago. Just about, yeah. I've been right. doing that for about two and a half years. Right. I remember because you were, you were the photographer that took pictures of us at Vulcan Gas Company. When did you start stand-up comedy? About four years ago. Four, so you were doing stand-up first? Yes, I was. Okay. And... Uh, what, what, uh, <laughs> do you make all your money doing pictures? Uh, I kind of do a lot of things. You know, I, I would do lighting and sound. I do a lot of photography, and I bartend from time to time. So you know, just a Mexican just doing many jobs as he can, right? <laughs> okay, Andreas, tell us some interesting stuff about you, because that I, you just didn't. I don't know. I didn't find your set to be very compelling. That's fine. So All right. I understand. Make yourself compelling now. Make me interested in you, Andreas. All right. I had a very hilarious injury when I was 20 years old. Injury? Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, uh, I was 20 years old. I just first moved away from home, so, you know, I was just a little rascal. I went to a park um, uh, on the river, right? I climbed up this tree, and as I was climbing up this tree, I'm standing on a branch, and I'm about to jump in the water, and there's this long chain hanging in front of me, right? This is a long chain. And I think nothing of it. I'm going to jump in the water, and I'm going to swim along and be on my merry way, right? I jump. I'm falling. I see the chain coming at me, and this ain't going to stop. Neither am I. This chain goes up my legs, hits my taint, fall in the water, and I'm just in a watery womb of pain. I swim to shore. I'm yelling, ruining everyone's day. And uh, first person on scene is actually a firefighter, and he says, all right, relax, relax, just breathe. Everything is there. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. What's going on, bro? Hit the fucking, what's going on? I Get to my, the fucking thing. Get I ripped my ball sack, y'all. I ripped my scrotum. That's what happened. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm bored of you too. I'm going to let you go. Andres Rodriguez, everybody. I'm bored of people today. <laughs> Boring. There you go. On to the next one. Jesus there's got to be some people that fucking prepared for this or something. Four years in the game, and I just can't even fucking hear a word he's saying. These Make some noise for your next comedian, Adam C. Pickens, everybody. Adam C. Pickens. Let's see if anything happens here. Some bad bucket pools tonight. You guys having fun out there? Oh, here we fucking go. Make some noise for Adam C. Pickens, everybody. What's up, Austin? Hey, does anybody remember their first orgasm? Yeah? I remember mine. But not for the reasons that you guys think. First of all, my dad was there. <laughs> it's not like that, man. Context. All right, when I was 11, I had to get a surgery on my stomach. All right, so pre-op, I had to get an ultrasound. All right? I walk in, me and my dad, I'm 11 years old. 22-year-old bombshell, 
All right, doing the pre-op. She has to shave me and then do an ultrasound on my stomach. So as 11-year-old will do, I'm as hard as a rock, okay? And every single time that she would pull the blanket up over my stomach, I would get harder. Every time. Until I blew all over my stomach. Jesus fucking Christ, man. I don't know what's going on here tonight, but it appears as though the bucket's fucked tonight. The outfit's phenomenal. I mean, it really is. I had very, very high hopes. Okay, Me turn too. that down or something. Fucking Jesus Christ. Adam, how long have you been doing stand-up? That was my first 60 seconds. Very, Ooh, very fucking good. Congrats. Thank God for that. Okay. The last two times that I've expected to hear that as an answer, I heard four years and two years. So congratulations. You were supposed to have that kind of set tonight. Right. I'm glad it was here. Okay, yeah. so how far did you drive to get here tonight? Uh, I've been here a couple months, but I drove from Detroit, so a long way. Okay, and you've been where for a couple months? Uh, southwest mostly, but staying all around. Yeah, okay. I'm, a, I'm a nomad, so I like stay on campgrounds and you know fish. And what do you have? A car, a van? What do you yeah. have? Yeah, no, I, I stay in my ride. Usually, I sleep. What's your I'm, ride? Uh, it's a older. It's technically a station wagon, old Ford. Oh, it's an actual station wagon. Well, no, no, no. Technically, technically. Yeah. Sorry. It is. You're saying it like it's a hearse or something like that. Like it's technically a station wagon, but no. not really. No, it's an escape, but technically on, like the, on, the, on the title, it says station wagon. It fucked me up okay. when, I, when I went to Escape. Yeah. As in what women try to do when you're near them. Okay. Eleanor they Kerrigan, wish. I'm going to check in with you <laughs> on Adam C. Pickens. <laughs> Adam's amazing. Uh, congrats on your first 60 seconds, whatever that was. Did it take you 60 seconds to come on that lady, too? Good no, question. it was actually okay. a few minutes. It was, it was really awkward, but, you it, know. This, everything is awkward right now. Um, <laughs> when, what I, that's great, though. You're right. This, this is how your first set is supposed to go. Yeah. The choice of outfit? Is that the only thing you had in the station wagon? <laughs> Yeah, is that a comedy thing, or do you always dress like that? You, usually I wear my good vest, but today it was, a little, it was a little warm out, so I figured I would go overalls, no, you know. Okay. This what, do you, is actually, what, do you wear, what do you wear on the lower half of that? You have underwear underneath there? Yes, sir. You have underalls? <laughs> All right. What do you do for a living? I hope they're long. <laughs> I don't know. It's so stupid. I, everybody's been so unfunny on this stage that it's actually making me less funny. It's like contagious. I feel, I feel like I'm about to get a text message. You have been a, a near unfunny people. You need to check yourself for, <laughs> for fucking rookieism. Okay. Answer the question, Adam. What do you do for a living? You're a nomad, uh, but what, how yeah. do you survive? Mostly hands-on jobs right now. I, I did automotive logistics and construction for the most part growing up, but you know now I just I'm applying to whatever right now. When you say nomad, are you one of those guys like when the cops pull you over, you're like, I don't have to show you my license, like one of those fucking idiots? I actually don't have my license right now, so. <laughs> have, the, have you had any run-ins with the cops? No, no. Actually, you know, down here they're so short-staffed, and if you're not, if you're not being, you know what I'm saying? If you're not being, an one idiot, more reason to move to Austin, so Texas, smart. everybody. We are so car, smart. The police force is short-staffed. No, I'm not. It's that amazing bad. that he knows that. This um, is like a tourism <laughs> ad for Austin. Come on down. You can fucking park anywhere and live. <laughs> The police don't give a fuck. You don't even need a license. Come on down. You can dress. You can wear whatever you want. You can chase your dreams. You don't even have to be funny on Kill Tony. You can do anything. Uh, Adam, what have you been doing with your life up until this point? Did you ever have like a structured life and then you became a nomad or were you just always sort of a, a, free, a free spirit? I, well, we moved a lot as a kid. And I followed that trend. I'm from Detroit, so it was a good place to leave, as you know. Okay, yep. And I've been kind of just going since I was about 17. Just Where have you been? Tell us some fucking interesting uh, stories about your life on the road. Man, well, I lived in Mississippi. was the first trip out of Michigan. And God, yeah, Mississippi. Nobody cheers for that. Why Mississippi? 
Uh, I was contracting work for the government and for a southern company. Basically. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. See, that's sort of the answer to the question I was looking for. So yeah. at one point you were accepting government contracts. <laughs> yeah, I actually a lot of them over. I've, uh, you'll like this. I, one time I built a weed farm for former DEA agents in Michigan. Yeah. I know that's, yeah. You when you said you're going to like this, I <laughs> thought to myself, there's no fucking way I'm going to like it. And boy, was you, I right. You just don't. You just don't believe me on that, but it's all right. No, I do believe you. It's just oh. not enter- not that entertaining to oh. me. <laughs> Adam C. Pickens, give me something else. What's your love life like? You ever bring a girl back to the escape? Strictly hotels. Yeah, strictly hotels. Is that true? Yeah, I, don't, you... sh- I don't shit where I eat, Tony. Come on. Well, you actually you do, do, dude. You shit where you sleep, and you sleep where you eat, and you eat where you shit. You literally admitted that four and a half minutes ago on this show. And are you saying hotels or motels? Because I'm guessing it's motels. Is it hotels, motels, or holiday inns? It, it, de- it and depends. And if that bitch keeps fucking up, are you going to fuck her friend? I hope so. Okie dokie. Uh, didn't get that. So do you really stay, get hotels if you have a chance with a girl? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll get hotels anyway sometimes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a complete scumbag. Sometimes. Are you, like, on dating apps or something like that? Are you on God, Farmers un- Only? Oh. Or? Unfor- <laughs> unfortunately, I am. It's, it's so bad, though. It's, it's, a, it's torture being on those apps, yeah. Right. Don't I know it. This is what I would match with. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I'd throw it down, baby. <laughs> I'm good. Oh, shit. Please don't take me to your escape room. I yeah. don't. He picks you up. He's like, you, you want to go back to my place? Because we're already there. <laughs> Come on so, in. So tell us what a date with uh, Adam C. Pickens is like. Give us an example of it. You go, you're on a dating app. Then what happens? Oh, I'm the, I, I, I'm the worst. Really, I'd be like, hey, would you want to go like fishing and then maybe go get some dinner after that? Or, or you know. And we by could, dinner, you mean the could, fish that you caught yeah. because you don't have any fucking money. Yeah. Well, no, right. I, I, I have money, yeah. No, so right. How do you have money? Uh, well, if you work good contracts and you work really hard, then you can save and you can put away and then you can kind of just do your thing. What made you want to start stand-up comedy? Is that what you moved to Austin for? No, no. I was kind of passing through. Uh, it was so cold in Detroit. I was back there for almost a year and it was so cold that I just needed to be somewhere where I could fish. So I started driving south until I could fish, and I ended up in Tennessee and then Arkansas, and now here I am in Texas. Hell yeah, okay. Yeah, buddy. It's I like the music scene so much that I stayed. I'm a musician, so like I was sold right away. You're a musician? Oh, I'm a killer musician. How long buddy. have you been playing music for? Uh, I've been taking uh, seriously music about 10 years. 10 years. Well, what instrument do you play? Uh, I play mostly now it's uh, acoustic guitar. I have it right downstairs, but oh, yeah, most mostly guitar. I used to play like piano, and uh, I had a cello for a while, a ukulele. You know, f- run it down. Yeah, the musicians are all shaking their head no at me, so <laughs> it ain't gonna happen, Adam C. Pickens. But I will tell you this: is that your interview was more interesting than the, everyone else out of the bucket tonight. So congratulations. There's a little joke, hey guys. Box. Awesome. We're gonna tech. keep it moving along. Good news, everybody. We have one of the comedians for you. Oh, for the love of fucking God. One of the strongest regulars in the history of the show, famous for his unbelievable roasting skills and writing skills and performing skills. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the one, the only, motherfucking David Lucas, everybody. Here we go. Yeah. I'm one of those black people who like racism. (laughs) For real, because like I'm on y'all sides, the whites, you know, and (laughs) and I do love racism because uh, if there was no racism, there would be no Carhartt. I I really love Carhartt. I think about a lot of shit as a comedian, and uh, sometimes I think to myself, I'm like, do gay guys die? You know? <laughs> like, it's a real question, you know? Like, 
Like, I've never heard somebody say, I'm going to a gay guy's funeral. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of like a baby midget, you know? Like, I've never seen one, but I know they exist. You know? <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's the last part. <laughs> I wonder do they I wonder do they bury gay guys face down? You know what I'm <laughs> this is what he would want. <laughs> All right, John, so appreciate it. Unbelievable. That. Oh my god. I almost forgot what comedy was like for a second, everybody. Holy shit. Jokes, timing, yeah. execution. Yeah. I truly, truly. So when you die, we'll bury you face down. Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. And when we bury you six feet under, we'll bury you on your back, and your little belly's going to be hanging out of the dirt still because you're a fat fuck, you son of a bitch piece of shit. <laughs> He's so happy to see you. <laughs> What's up, baby? We're going to bury you in the place you love the most, your refrigerator. <laughs> You're going to get buried in a tutu, nigga. Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Easy access when you go to hell for being a gay <laughs> All the other gay niggas going to be down there with you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Tony has joined the party. <laughs> when you say, I'm going to end up in hell, are you talking about the gym, your hell, or like actual... Yo hell is being around straight men acting straight every week. <laughs> what? That that just Tony, you the only nigga that go for ice cream. This motherfucker. That is straight true. man. Who got a taste for ice cream? Man? That is true. <laughs> and every time I eat ice cream, you gain another pound. It's incredible. I don't know how it happens. It's like we're twins. We feel each other. And every pain. time you tell a lie, your booty hole get bigger. <laughs> 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 Son of a bitch. Like reverse Pinocchio, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't bring Philly into this. <laughs> Pull his pants down. Let's see if he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> You son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> when you fart, it sound like a tuba, nigga. Your ass. Wait, what? <laughs> Hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> That's a Tony fart. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to fart real quick. Let's see what it sounds like. Oh, I've been, I've been telling a lot of lies lately. <laughs> I've been very dishonest. Tony, they bring your booty to UT Stadium to signal halftime. <laughs> 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 15 minutes. Oh. I love it. One day, I'm going <laughs> to... Oh, I just farted. <laughs> one... <laughs> I, can't, I can't even say it. David, that was one of my favorite sets I think you've ever done, man. That Thank was really talking. good. Uh, and, and the only thing that I can say to, you know, all the comedians that are here is they don't understand what Rogan has done with this place. Like, we're, when I'm in town, I'm able to get up 15, 20 times a week, and, and that's the only thing that makes you a better comic. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Right. <laughs> right. His, in in his, L.A., that took two months. Yeah. Right. This is your favorite <laughs> club since the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> they got a heated uh, toilet seat upstairs for Tony. <laughs> That's because you sat on it before me. <laughs> Tony, you look like you put Icy Hot in the back of your underwear, nigga. You know what? <laughs> I'm in the middle of love, I man. Mean, I mean, it, it gives me a little pep in my step, you know what I mean? <laughs> David, why do you think you're so overweight? We never really talk about it directly. Like, I know my feminine qualities and why you call me gay, but we never talk about why you're morbidly obese. You know what I mean? Because you ain't got no bass in your voice, nigga. That's why. <laughs> no, I like to eat, bitch. I like yeah. all that good but shit. But tell us, tell us what you eat and when you eat it and what happens there. So that well, now the it's different because I got all these people that's 
making me healthier, so I don't get to eat. Aww. I don't get to eat the way I used to. But what what did you used to eat so that Red Band knows how to make changes in his Jesus. life? <laughs> Oh, bro, you know, you got to wake up in the morning and Postmates some Chick-fil-A. Uh, yeah, I used to wait to 10.30 so I get lunch and breakfast. Wow. A, a wow. chicken biscuit with waffle fries is the best. Mm. <laughs> and now what? Now what are some of your guilty pleasures? Now that you have people oh trying to God. get you healthy. Now for breakfast, it's an athletic green smoothie, bro. Oh, so, no. Yeah. Oh, I don't eat no. a real meal till like 2 p.m. I got to tell you, Athletic Greens is one of the sponsors. And I got to tell you, it's one of the most delicious beverages that I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> I just love the flavor of Athletic Greens. I mean, there you go. Yeah, yeah. For the listeners, that wasn't me. <laughs> it's either my butthole or Eleanor's pussy. <laughs> An Eleanor Queef. My pussy echoes. Is that what that old Queef sound like? Yeah. Because yeah, the, they got the long curtains. Yeah. <laughs> old women, old women Queef sound like uh-huh. Andy Griffin music. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it stutters like that guy. That was oh, a. <laughs> yeah. Pa 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 poot. <laughs> If you made Jared read a book of alliteration, it'll take two years. Oh my God! Bob's Big Burger bicycles <laughs> brakes <laughs> boulders. Oh <my> <laughs> it's a it's a cheat code. That motherfucker say six words and it's a minute. He's yep. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? This nigga cheating. He crushes with retard strength. It is I'm incredible. Like, yes. It is unbelievable. I'm about to get a stutter, nigga. Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Guys. I'll have a number six. X X X X X X X X extra butter. Flag it. David, you're unbelievable. We are the Guinness World Record holders for the two people that have made fun of each other the most ever on the internet of all time. It continues. On June 10th, June 10th is the 10-year anniversary of Kill Tony. Yeah, Sold right. out in an hour, but tickets are available for the live stream at moment.co slash Kill Tony. We are live streaming it. Uh, make some noise one more time for David Lucas, everybody. The one and the only. Bringing life back to the show, just like the regulars are supposed to do. And now we go back to the bucket, as we've seen. Anything can happen. Make some noise for your next comedian, Chris Lively, everybody. Chris Lively. One more time for Chris, everybody. So, uh, I was taking a shower this morning and uh, I dropped the soap on myself. And I started... uh, daydreaming about what it would be like if I uh, had been born a woman. And not just any woman, but a hot woman. I'd go out, I'd get my lips filled. I'd get the MILF makeover. Get the BBL. And then I'd go out and try to find a bunch of rich black rappers and I would fuck them all no condom completely raw dog style as many as I could get in a night I would avoid the white rappers though bad lyrics small dicks they come too quick but their gold chains would be real. And then I'd finish jack- jacking myself off. Wow. The tradition continues, ladies and gentlemen. Chris Lively out of the bucket. First time doing stand up? First time ever. There you go. Okay, that makes it okay. Give him a hand. It's his first time. Trying it out. How old are you, Chris? I'm 49. 49 years old. Here you are in Austin trying stand up for the first time. Yes. 
Uh, how did you end up here? What have you been doing with your life up until this point? Uh, I own a restaurant up in Maine, and okay. I bought a condo down here in Austin to get away from the winters. Uh-huh. And, how uh, long ago did you do that? Uh, last January. Okay. And then um, I've seen you probably 40 or 50 times at the Vulcan and then here at the Mothership. Okay. So I've always seen you uh, criticize hecklers and saying, you know, you don't even have the balls to sign up. Right. So I said, you know what? I'm going to try to sign up. I was in a stand-up line. Didn't make it in. I was like, I'm going to go out back. I'm going to sign up. And I like that. Good I answer. I can't entertain you guys. Good answer. Uh, so how did it feel? Tell the people what, you, what happened that you did expect and what you didn't expect. The feeling that you just had on this stage doing the 60 seconds. Well, I was just hoping not to have a heart attack walking in here. <laughs> Um, and it's just a shock, you know, the, the percentages of getting called are, are so minuscule. It and is unbelievable. It's just a privilege to be up here with you guys and everyone. I mean, this is crazy for me. Okay. Tell us something interesting about your life, Chris. Um, I got knighted in Belgium. Uh, How'd you get knighted? <laughs> uh, I own a Belgian beer bar. I'm a chef, blah, 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 blah. But uh, I did a lot of promotional work <laughs> for Belgian beer and cheeses and chocolate. And yeah, I've shot commercials over in Europe and whatever. Yeah. Oh, a uh, whore from Philly is impressed. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh. Control your sluts, Eleanor. <laughs> yeah. Those are my people. We'll get them. We'll get them yeah. outside. You, you know how to bake with yeast? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I also own a cannabis dispensary. So when we trim our cannabis, we always put on the, til the Kill Tony show. Uh huh. So that's how I kind of got into you. Yep. And my wife has no idea. I'm even, I don't even know if I'm going to tell her I did this. And she's going to be watching <laughs> in two weeks. Right. And I'm going to be coming up after. So David where does Lucas. your wife think you are right now? Uh, well, she thought I was going to be in the standby line, and then I told her I was waiting in the alley, but I don't know if I'm going to tell her I actually got called up. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. Is there anything you want to tell her since she... Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jesus Christ. I you know, if you, had, you shouldn't be heckling out there. If you had any courage, you would have signed up for tonight's <laughs> show. Exactly. 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 Uh, I just want How long tell. you been with this old fucking bag of buns? What are we talking about here? 21 years I've been married. 21? 21, yes. Amazing. What does she do? Uh, she works uh, with me. She, she makes helps desserts. Run the restaurant. My daughter makes the desserts. Oh, uh, how's your daughter? Uh, she's 21. Look at that, red band. Does she have an go. Instagram? Hey, hey, hey. Or? <laughs> <laughs> she likes older men. Whoa. Oh. Does, she does she like older, fatter, more disgusting yeah. men? Yes. Can she keep a secret? Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Red pan meet bread pan. <laughs> red pan. Yeah, yeah, man. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, what do you do for fun, Chris, when you're not doing a running all these businesses and shit? Yeah. Uh, pretty much uh, I get in the standby line and I'm here all the time just watching the show, drinking drinks. Um, but that's what I do is I watch comedy. I try to go out to as much um, live art as I can. I mean, I, I work to put a roof over my head and to put my kids in school. But Great answer. That, Great yeah. answer. Let me ask a different question. Yeah. 21 years with the same woman. Uh, how do you keep things exciting in the bedroom? You seem like a creative guy. You've put yourself in position to run businesses yeah. and things that you like to do. You like drinking. You have a beer thing. You like food. You have a restaurant. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited to hear if you have any tricks in the bedroom or anything like that, Chris. Bro, we're, we're freaky as fuck. Tell me about yeah, it. Let me Let's go. You. This is. I had a feeling about this. Yeah, I had a feeling. No, there is absolutely anything that you can imagine we do. It's, yeah, dude, we have all can the Can you toys. describe it a little bit better than that? Because... Hitachi wands, fuck water, fuck it. Wait, 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 okay. Fuck water. Hold on, time yeah. out. The yeah. Flag on the play. I need a yeah. penalty flag. Yeah. Yeah. Can I get a penalty flag for next week and that just means yeah. stop everything? Yeah. Yoni, you got yeah. one? Okay. I'm getting a flag. You, you, you just, you, as a fan of the show, you should be excited because you just inspired a new thing that's going to happen, <laughs> which is an automatic pause on the show. Yeah. Okay. What the fuck is fuck water? <laughs> <laughs> fuck water is a lube. It's called fuck water. Yeah. Yeah, uh, man. And it's just lube? CBD. Just lube, but with a fancy name. Okay. Yeah. That's good branding. Yeah. You get pegged? Uh, you know what? I, I'll, I'll <laughs> Damn. 
Yeah. Wow. Uh, is that the chocolate you were talking about earlier? No, 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 no. No, no uh, but before we went to Europe, like the night before my my wife decided she was going to stick her finger up my ass for the first time. Whoa. And I'll tell you, my, my ass is made of porcelain. It is not made for that. I was fucked up for like two weeks on that Damn. European oh. vacation. Wow. It was You're like, ride, no more ride. normal, no more. <laughs> no more. No more normal. I tried. I'll try anything once, but man. Bad. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So wow, just a single finger in your ass fucked you up for two weeks. Bad, dude. Explain that to us. How, why, uh, does your, does your wife have elephantitis of the fingers? <laughs> I don't know either that or have a really small asshole. I don't know. By scar well, tissue? I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> I don't know if you know oh, this, but man. when I lie, my asshole gets... <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, you man, need to use yeah. more fuckwad in your ass. I, I think so. It's something, something, but... Uh, yeah. It is quite incredible. You are the only uh, non you are the only non-regular non-golden ticket winner that actually seems comfortable in your interview portion during this show. You're giving real answers, you're yeah, an man. open book. Everybody yeah, else yeah, seems yeah, to be playing yeah, it yeah. safe. Yeah. Where yeah. do you think this type of comfort comes from? Do you have you done anything else on stages or public speaking? Why are you so comfortable? You think it's just because you absorb so much comedy? Yeah, I've you've seen envisioned you guys this so many times. You've pictured this moment many times. Yeah, man. I mean, my wife and me and my clique. I mean, we worship you guys. We see it, and I, I see Aww. all of the little movements and stuff. Uh -huh. uh, I know all the. I don't know them personally, but uh, we. I follow the band members, and it's like this is. This is what I do for fun. I work for this. So cool. Yeah, man. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Well, Chris Lively, uh, um, do you have a? Do you have tickets to the ten-year anniversary show? I don't. Man. It's sold out in sixty-five minutes. Three thousand people are going to be there, and the good news is, is you're getting a big joke book, and I'm putting you on my personal guest list, June 10th. June 10th, live from the ACL Live Theater. You can watch the stream live, moment.co slash killtony. You guys having fun out there, huh? Make some noise for your next comedian, Nico, everybody. Out of the bucket, Nico. There he is. Make some noise for Nico, everybody. The Kill Tony debut of Nico. All right, yeah. here we go. Uh, I'm a little sick, or I was sick, getting over something. I don't always sound like this. I wasn't sucking dicks before this. Um, maybe I was. Don't fucking judge me. Um, so y'all ever take one of those 20th Century Fox shits? You know what I'm talking about. You sit on the toilet and it's like... <laughs> Got you feeling like a fucking superstar up there on the toilet. <laughs> so you, you might be wondering, is this dude bi up here? And the answer is yes, I am biracial. Um, <laughs> but to, to tell the truth though, everybody's a little bi, right? You just gotta figure out if that's bisexual or bipolar, right? <laughs> Uh, in my case, I've got the bifecta going on. I'm all three. Um, <laughs> uh, shit. You know, no, but, but truthfully, I am. I am biracial. I'm half black, half white. Uh, it's the same thing as being full black in the sense that uh, I still get harassed by the police and followed by a retail source, but I only got half the dick. <laughs> it's, like, it's fucked up, man. It's fucked up. Um, I really wanted to spend some time today working on my set so that I have something funny to say for all you guys. Um, but to be honest, my new Lego set sounded a lot more exciting to work on. It's an 18 and up set. Uh, you might be wondering how a Lego set could be 18 and up. Let me tell you. It's a Lego pocket pussy. <laughs> but if those things hurt as bad on your dick as they do on your feet, I might be selling that shit later. Thank you. There you go, Nico, everybody. An adorable set. Grab that microphone, Nico. Stand on that red X. You're about to be interviewed uh, live on uh, Kill Tony. Welcome. Look at me, Nico. How are you? Uh, dude, I'm so fucking happy to see you right now. Absolutely. So, so Thank tight. you. I'm happy to see you. I didn't know Lenny Kravitz made a baby with Stuart Little uh, 25, 25 years ago. 
How long you been doing stand up? Uh, I've I've done like eight open mics. I started in January. Okay. Um, yeah, I moved here to Austin about a month ago. From where? From Seattle. Oh yeah, that's why you look like that. Okay. <laughs> but I'm not from Seattle. Where are you from? I kind of don't want to say it. You kind of don't want to say. I'm from Bakersfield, California. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> All right. So. Okay. What well, do you do for work? You work at a uh, gay carnival or something like that? Or? <laughs> yes, uh, at night. I work at Trader Joe's. Oh. <laughs> Similar. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> All right. What do you do at Trader Joe's? And why are you wearing your outfit right now? <laughs> <laughs> Come straight from work? Yeah, no, they don't, they don't let me wear this outfit at work. Uh, but uh, I do at Trader Joe's. I ring people up, um, talk to white girls. Um, you like white girls. I love white girls. You love white girls. Yeah. That's your thing. Yeah, I like Asian girls too, but they don't fuck with me. Oh, why do you think that is? I honestly don't know. I really. Do oh, know. you're looking like a sideshow barber. <laughs> Happy Asian Heritage Month, everybody! Don't forget, May is Asian Heritage Month. Do you think yeah. you can make any joke you want as long as you say Happy Asian Heritage Month afterwards? <laughs> oh, we do not like a humor. That is, that is, that's just mean. The band is all roasting him. And, uh, guys, guys, you can't just have your own side roast back here. So you're bipolar and biracial. Do you ever call yourself bye bye? Do you ride a bicycle? Do you ride a bicycle? Yeah, I do. Okay. There you go. All right. I ride a motorcycle. You do? I do. Yeah. Wow. It's in the alley. Okay. It's not that cool. I don't know why I said so that. So you I'm must sorry. do pretty good with these white girls. I can see. You're a very charismatic guy. Stylish. Uh, I just I had, I moved here with my fiance. Oh. And then I didn't have enough mushrooms to continue giving her, and she left me. You didn't have enough mushrooms? Or something. I don't, I don't know what it was, but yeah, she That's just... How long were you engaged for? Uh, since October. We've been together like four years. Four years? Yeah. Engaged in October. When did she leave you? Like a month ago. When you moved here? Like a week after I moved here. She moved here with you. She moved here And with she you. left you a week afterwards. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Did she find an, a, an actual man? She might have, yeah. <laughs> a full black guy? Honestly, the man, the man might have had a vagina. What? The man might have had a vagina. Is that true? Maybe, honestly, I'm being honest. I, I, maybe, yeah, she might have got back to their ex. When you say maybe, what do you mean? Is she won't fucking tell me, dude. She won't tell me. She just tells me she loves me all the time. She misses me every second of the day. She doesn't know what the fuck she's doing, but she's still... What she, do you say to her when she tells you that? At, at this point, I just listened, but before I was trying to get her to come back, but I don't know. I guess I got to cut her off or something. Yeah, don't listen anymore. It's fucked Cut up. that yeah, off. I don't know why I can't. I, it's hard. Yeah. You still love her? I do, very much. Damn, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> James Atkins, one of the best musicians in the world with a very genuine damn dog coming from the drums. Genuine from the heart. He literally, his lips didn't even move. He's just, damn dog. That was incredible. It literally came through you. This is incredible. When's the last time you talked to her? Uh, three days ago. Three days ago. And how did that conversation go? Give us a little breakdown. Uh, yeah, I called her at, like, three in the morning. Three in the morning. Because we still have... You called her or she called you? I called her. I saw that you, her... Had you been drinking? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have you, were you doing any, other, were you, any other things, I, illicit drugs or anything? I ate some mushrooms. And you had some mushrooms? Yeah. And how many drinks do you think you had? I had, like, four shots of rum. Perfect. So you're buzzed as fuck, right? Yeah. yeah. 3 a.m., you call her. What do you say? Come home. What the fuck are you doing? Where are you at? What are you? Hold on. Put the mic up to your mouth. Yeah. I don't... And you say what? <laughs> I mean, I tried to start out cool. Like, I don't want to be too pushy because I want her to make her own decisions. But um, I guess I just, I listened to her, what she had to say, although I love using shit. And then I followed up with, okay, what the fuck are you doing? Come home. Right. Right. Okay. And then what did she say to that? Bro, fucking nothing. I, I don't know. She's. I, I love you. I miss you. I, she's, I don't know if this has anything to do with it. She's 24. Uh, so maybe she's just not there or something. I don't, I don't really know. Eleanor Kerrigan. She's a twat. <laughs> Let her go. Uh, it's hard. I think Throw her over to damn. See if he can't fuck it up. Yeah, I know, I know. 
I got to. Oh, I hate her. I got to. I, I'm sorry. I, I want to. Well, I, because I you're you. sweet and you you're trying. And you yeah. really do. You do seem like a genuinely sweet man. Yeah. Have you been with uh, another Men? another woman since? <laughs> <laughs> have you been with another girl since she broke up with you? Um, I don't want to offend anybody, but it's like only chicks I ma- match with on Tinder are fat chicks. Well, okay, hold on. That's from, not from, offensive. From, That's from okay. now on, I need you to put the mic right up to your mouth and project okay, okay. a little bit. You're very, very, very okay. quiet. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. So if you didn't hear that, I'll offend you again. I need uh, you to project, project. I only, Use I only your. Fu- ma- I only match with fat chicks, and it's cool and everything, but they do those fucking angles, and I'm like, there's a certain degree that I'll accept, but then when they, I, they get to my place, and I'm like, this is too much. Like I can't. <laughs> Why do you, why do you, what do you think about Philly whores? We got a whole group okay, of... Okay, thank you. <laughs> Did you say, what is a Philly whore? So you only match with fat chicks, but that wasn't the question that I asked you. I Have you, you been whore. with another woman since your girl broke up with you? Two. Two women. And yeah. you take them back to your place? I cook. So I say, come over, I'll cook dinner for you. Okay, so you cook dinner, and then what happens? Uh, fat yeah. chicks love dinner, by the way. That's a very, very smart move. Very smart move. When you get catfish, cook the catfish. You know what I mean? <laughs> Incredible. Is that your thing? You think that because cooking is the first thing in your bio, that's why you're matching with so many fat chicks? <laughs> I was just say working out first yeah. or something. Yeah, like exercising, no idea how to cook. That's a very good point that you make. Right, <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah. Think that- I like cooking, <laughs> sleeping with fat chicks. <laughs> I like being the small spoon at night. <laughs> it's hard, it's hard, you know, it's hard. It's so hard these girls decide. that you cook for, they, they're a little bit on the bigger side, right? Yeah. So yeah. then there you are, just attacking. Yeah. Just, just pumping those little fucking size 21 hips. Those suspenders are holding up everything I, I can't underneath there right My now. Hips are too small. They really are. Yeah. I don't think I've seen hips that know, small in forever. Up, and that's coming up. from me and my gaping hey. asshole. So imagine, I mean, I know small hips when I Just see it. One thing I want to mention. What is that? Are those like, is that like a 28, 26? What is that waist it's size? It's a 29. Really? It's still too big, though. I don't think that's a 29, dude. That's incredible. That is a very small it's waist. Maybe, maybe it is, maybe it is. I don't know. Okay. What do you do for work? Yeah, Trader Joe's, man. Trader oh, that's Joe's. right. What do you do for fun when you're not working? I do stuff. I'm at risk of sounding like Hans Kim. Uh, I do like drones, um, except for I I build drones. I raced them professionally for a few years. Oh. Um, yeah, it's a lot wow. of fun. Very nerdy, but a lot of fun. It's like FPV drones. You put you put the goggles on and race them around. Yeah, FPV. Oh. It's not cool. That that could be another reason that women aren't attracted to me. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun. I like to see You come them off like Asian to them. They're like, we don't want that. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate. And to the we Asian want a black women, guy. I I, yeah, the Asian women, it's fucked because like, I can't come across Asian to them. Right. That's what I want. Kind of do, though. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been with an Asian woman? No. Never, not once. Never, not once. But Aww. you have this like fetish. Do you watch like Asian porn? I don't. I don't watch Asian porn. Um, but I, I do have a fetish, I guess. Um, Is there an Asian woman in the audience tonight by any chance? Clap if there's an Asian woman. That one's a good guy that cooks. Is there an Asian? Are you? That's a, don't point him out. Somebody's Is there pointing. an Asian woman here? Everybody's She's not pointing. Come if you play that Is that music. a real Asian woman? Stand up. Oh, that's a legit Asian oh, woman. She's that's quiet. a good one. Wow, that is a legit Asian. Is that your Is that your boyfriend there, Donald Trump Jr. right there? Look at this fucking guy. Ah, uh, she went white. What she you guys white. think this Asian girl should give Lenny Kravitz his first Asian kiss, huh? So, <laughs> such on the spot. I'm just kidding. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. I think that chick almost, I saw her almost cause a car accident the other day. So <laughs> uh, I love it. Um, look, man, I don't know. I can't remember what your set was like, but I don't think it was that good. Take a joke, Buck. It's the half white. <laughs> Okie dokie. There he goes, everybody. Nico, everybody. All right. Okay. So like I said earlier, we have a golden ticket winner. Has not been on the show for quite a while. Since being on the show, uh, a lot has happened in his career. Um, We're going to hopefully find out a little bit more about that. Ladies and gentlemen, your second golden ticket winner of the night, 
back from Canada. Make some noise for Aaron Belisle, everybody. You gotta make noise one more time for Aaron Belisle, everybody. What's up, motherfuckers? Daddy's home. Because I'm disabled and funny, people think they can ask me whatever stupid ass questions they want. This guy on Facebook recently asked me how I masturbate. I didn't really know how to answer that question. How the fuck do you think? Well, you've seen those arcade claw machines, right? <laughs> Don't look away, you son of a bitch. You look me in the eye while I claw at my monkey. Some of you are wondering if I'm serious. No, you fucking idiot. I use my other hand. I've been thinking about starting my own porn website. I'm gonna call it Only Hands. Or, rather, Only Claws. Tony Hinchclit is gonna be my first subscriber. There you go, Aaron Belisle. That is true. I will be your first subscriber. I'm going to watch you jerk off like a claw machine. Okay. <laughs> Aaron, welcome back. You are a, uh, a fucking star. You've been killing it off riding the wave off of all of this Kill Tony momentum that you built, whatever, 10 months ago or whatever the hell. And uh, can we talk about the one thing that you did that you got? I do. Kind of, Maybe. I talked about it with Howie Mandel a uh, couple weeks ago, so I could probably talk about it. Me and my new friend, Howie Mandel. Sure, you know what I mean? Right just there. one of my mothership friends. No big deal. <laughs> just hanging out with my heroes every night, everybody. You guys know what that's like. Go ahead. Since I left, my life has gone crazy. I have been headlining comedy clubs a year into comedy. I got on a CBC special, and I auditioned for America's Got Talent. That's all you're allowed to say at this point is that you auditioned. Okay. Yes. He auditioned. Totally nothing else happened. Breaking news. AGT is watching Kill Tony to find their people for comedy now. This is an actual fact. And uh, unfortunately, it's a bad night of research for them here tonight. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> sorry about that, America's Got Talent. Turns out we don't have that much here. <laughs> but Canada does. This is what we're finding out, is that uh, handicapped people from Canada are taking over the world right now. You and Jared and Nathan, both Canadians, both slightly disabled. Uh, and you guys are smashing. You guys are the two newest additions to the show all the time. What's going on? What do you, what do you have something to say? <laughs> the CBC special was all disabled people, though. So the moral of the story is if you want to be on TV, go get a disability and be the best handicap of them all. That is true. That's the only way for a straight white male to get anything now. You have to be fucking fucked up. <laughs> yep. You're about hey, to Tony, oh. I actually have a question for you. Oh, okay. Is it true that since I left, you've been giving all new comics at the Mothership anal probings Okie dokie. Uh, <laughs> roast comic Aaron Belisle. Give the guy the opportunity of a lifetime and just people just keep attacking my butthole for some reason. It's really not enough gay jokes about me on this show here tonight. And uh, to show you how disappointed I am, I'm going to suck your fucking cock right now. Woo! Now, okay. Aaron, what else is going on in life? Tell us something else other than fucking another fucking gay joke on me. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. <laughs> Really beating a gay horse on this one. <laughs> uh, 
son of a bitch. He's got something loaded up over there. I can already tell he's about to fucking talk more shit. Yes, I've been giving everyone anal probings, Aaron. Press your fucking buttons, dude. You son of a bitch. All I've done for you. All right, well. My company had widespread layoffs recently, and I am getting kicked out of my place. I kept my job, but I was very close to being unemployed, disabled, and living in my car. I'm so glad I didn't become Hans Kim. <laughs> yeah. I, think I don't want to be autistic, too. <laughs> right. And what kind of car do you have? Hopefully it's not a stick shift. I've always wondered that. Hyundai. Oh, okay. <laughs> Happy Asian Heritage Month, everybody. <laughs> I love it. You have a Hyundai. So uh, what's the plan? Have we gotten any updates about a possible move to America? That anything, anything breaking through? Are you allowed to not say right now? Canada's weird. They like listen to podcasts and shit so that they can literally hold their own people back. It is Ugh. fucking crazy. I can't really talk about it. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh. That's how fucked up Canada is, by the way. What a fucking pussy ass country that place is. <laughs> Which reminds me, I'm doing the Queen Elizabeth Theater in Toronto, uh, August <laughs> 3rd. Very few tickets left. It's a <laughs> massive theater, but who cares? Just me doing stand up. And, surprise. And I'm going to come. And guess who's performing on that show in that theater? Aaron Belial, everybody. <laughs> yup. Eleanor, this is your first time seeing Aaron, correct? I love him. Is this what everybody's striking about in L.A. with this A.I. shit? Yeah. <laughs> I never saw it firsthand. This is fucking great. <laughs> This is the guy... People are pissed at you, bro. <laughs> this is the guy that does all the AI. If I when one more AI joke, I'm going to fucking kill myself. You shut your fucking... Oh, okay. AI jokes. I'll smash your fucking fingers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you they smash have good his... health care in Canada. If you smash his fingers, you're also crushing his voice box at the same <laughs> time. That is just a low blow. That's how you choke him out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just put him in Sorry. a Chinese finger trap. <laughs> Happy Asian Heritage Month, everybody. <laughs> the best kind of finger trap there is. I believe you. You're a wrestler and I'm a cripple. Fuck Not yeah. a fair fight. <laughs> that is true. Oh, I love him. Eleanor famously uh, was a, uh, one of the uh, top female professional wrestlers. Wow, I like that I made top. Yeah. <laughs> Just because top. I was a top, not a bottom. Easy Rider, Wow yeah. Women of Wrestling. Is that what you're <laughs> yeah. trying to find? Yeah. <laughs> W-O-W. Wow Easy Women of Wrestling. Rider. That's He's what a big fan. That's what he jerks off to, isn't it? It's your spank bank, you sick fuck. Yeah. The old fucking... You <laughs> son of a bitch. Wait, was that me? <laughs> Tony! Wow. It's creepy. It's creepy. <laughs> you're right. It is AI at this Scared point. Scared of him. All right, Aaron, anything else we should talk about before letting you go? We've missed you. We're very excited. I'm excited to have you on my massive theater show. Everything's good. Look for him on this upcoming season of AGT. He definitely auditioned. Things went <laughs> perhaps better than just an audition, but I guess we cannot say. Maybe. Who knows? Howie Mandel made it seem like I could talk about it, but maybe I can't. There's probably some annoying executive producer that told you to keep your mouth shut, right. which is easy for you to do. <laughs> He's like, hey, don't talk about this. Keep your thumbs in where I can see them. Do you remember a few weeks ago, I told you my Airbnb host tried to kick me out and he showed up and looked at me and was like, oh God, I'm sorry, you can stay. And he gave me half my money back. Right. Yeah. I'm staying with that same landlord this time. And this time he filled the apartment with snacks, $100 of dog food, and Gatorade and offered me so much stuff. That man really doesn't want to get sued. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Take advantage of everything that you have. Okay. Uh, 
Aaron Belial. I'm just kidding. He's already got all the joke books. I'm not going to throw a joke book at him. Make some noise for him, everybody. Bob You're here. going to like any of this. Wait, what? What'd you say? You can't just hit the repeat button? I don't have a joke book. Really? Okay. You But you have to catch it. You ready? <laughs> here we go. Oh! Let's try again. Let's try again. Let's try again. Look, there you go. I like this. All right. Here, up here, Aaron. Just let him hit the ground. Let him hit the ground. All right. Here's another one. Aaron, just stop fucking cleaning up after yourself. Oh, shit. All right. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We got it. Oh, okay. Here we, Aaron, up here. Up here. Up here. Up here. Up here. Hey! Yeah, that's so good. You got it. No, take it. Oh, yeah. Did we get that one back? Give us that joke book back, you fucking shady thieves. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. All right. You have to put some snacks in his Airbnb for that. Ladies and gentlemen, how loud can this place get for Aaron Belial, everybody? All right. We pulled another name out of the bucket. Make some noise for Ryan Shields, everybody. Your next comedian. Final bucket pull of the night, perhaps. Ryan Shields. This is your last bucket pull of the night. Ryan Shields, everyone. Woo! Austin, let me hear you. You guys like to party? Yeah, I was at a huge party last week and I was at a wedding. My cousin married my aunt. <laughs> it was a beautiful ceremony though. Grandpa was in the parking lot selling moonshine, or he calls it fuck water. Like I said, a whole group of us went up to the usher carrying our fuck waters. <laughs> he looked at us and said, are you with the bride or the groom? Both. <laughs> so we sat in a circle. <laughs> I take some liberties being a comedian, though. See, it's actually my dad's first cousin and my mom's sister. Yeah, so it's like East Texas weird. It's not like Louisiana weird. <laughs> All right, I got the kit, and I'll stop there. Okie dokie. Here he is. Okay. Ryan Shields, welcome. How long have you been doing stand-up? About seven years. Seven years. Where at? San Antonio. Where do you, what do you do for work? Stand-up. What do you really do for work? Stand-up. How do you make money doing stand-up comedy? One-nighters. Where? How? Just all over the place. That How was do you just sell tickets? It's places that's already booked. I'm just booked to go there. Who books you? Uh, Jeremy J Dog, Road Dog Productions. <laughs> shout out! You make a, you make a living doing one. How I didn't many? say I made a great living, but I do make a living doing it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you do that, and only that. Yeah. And you yeah, survive. That's all I do. Yeah. How do you survive? What's your budget like? Well, it's my not wife, easy. I my say wife this. works. I'm married. Gotcha. So, You're yeah. married. The yeah. wife. The wife's the breadwinner, yeah. and you're clearly the bread eater. Um, <laughs> what does your wife do for work? She works at a dealership. A car dealership? Yeah. Okay, fuck she's yeah. She's a service person, so she's the one that talks you into getting a brake job you don't need. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, what do you do for fun? Tell us about it, because you seem like an interesting guy. I feel like there's a lot underneath the surface here. Uh, you have a Chevy Silverado? No. Ford F-150. God damn it. So close. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. I'm a Texan. Okay. All right. You don't do that Chevy shit around here. You make a lot, making most of your money in Oklahoma, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Contributing to their economy. Okie dokie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ryan, how long you been with your wife? 20 years. 20 years. Do you have any secrets or tricks to uh, keeping a relationship over 20 years happy? Stay on the road a lot. Yeah. Ah. Okay. A lot of one-nighters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, tell us more about your life. Give us something here. Uh, How old are you? 43. What? What? Yeah. Are you serious? Mm? You're 43? 
Okay, so tell us about. Do all I look sixty five or yes. thirty two? Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. So tell us about all the trauma your first uh, forty <laughs> years of uh, being on planet Earth. What happened exactly? You look like you were perhaps molested by a transformer or something like that, like some type of truck. Some type of truck fucked you when you were a little kid. <laughs> it was a Chevy. Well, yeah. it, was. it was. It was a Silverado. <laughs> never again. Never again. Uh, I've just been doing a lot of outside work most of my life. Okay. It's probably the sun right. and the extreme gray hairs. Okay, 43. Yeah. You are four years older than me. Yeah. I'm six years older than you? Yeah, <laughs> Red Band is six years older than you. We're not doing math. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave me to fuck out of it, all right? <laughs> I'm going to die in the back of a Chevy like I want it to. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so how long of sets are you doing on the road when you're making a living doing stand-up comedy? I do an hour. You do an hour? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, anything crazy ever happen in any of these? I feel like you're doing some real roadhouse style, like hillbilly bumpkin gigs. What, what's it like out there on the streets doing one-nighters in country towns? Well, the last one, I did a joke about my brother fucking my cousin. Crowd and, goes wild. It, oh, <laughs> wait for it. I was in Arkansas. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I'd never really gotten a woo woo from that joke before, but right. then I asked her, I was like, "Really?" And she was like, second cousin." <laughs> wow. Yeah, serious as shit too. I was like, "I, I was just joking." <laughs> Hell yeah! The second cousin ain't bad, right? That's <laughs> <laughs> fucking red <right, man. laughs> That's just I mean, it ain't your sister, but it ain't bad. It's not blood. <laughs> I'm hard as a rock right now. I don't know what everybody else is freaking out about. Um, give us another fun fact about your life, Ryan, your entire life. What did, oh. you, what did your parents do? Oh, go ahead. You well, had an idea there. Asian Appreciation Month. My wife, Japanese. Nice. You have a Japanese wife? Yeah. Wow, that is incredible. Yeah. My right. goodness, you've mm-hmm. been with a Japanese woman for 20 years. Yeah, maybe that's what... You know, she looks young all the time, so she just sucks all the life out of me. They <laughs> <laughs> do that. Yeah. yeah. Do that. Wow, that is incredible. <laughs> she she cooks for that you. Is, it's good though. I mean, it's. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think that was a me love you long time joke, I wasn't think so. it? Oh yeah. I think so. That's right. Happy Asian Heritage Month. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So where do you I'm, meet a Japanese girl in Texas? San Antonio. Really? Oh. Are they there? Is that yeah. what they are? What are really? they doing there? Uh, her dad was in the military, so. Ah, uh, yeah. that makes sense. Which a lot of people assume I am because now I'm with her. And she works so. in car service. So she just causes accidents and then they have to come and spend money at her business. Do, she has had so many accidents. I know. It and is. I've said this before. It is the <laughs> truest racial stereotype that exists. Even D. Madness is laughing about how bad Asian drivers are. He knows. He can't even see. Mm-hmm. And he knows. But yet, she's the worst front seat driver. Or, I guess, back seat driver, but she's always in the front. But she's always wants to tell me how to drive. Right. Oh, make a right yeah. turn. Like, maybe I should hit that parked car instead of making a left. Yeah. That is incredible. Oh, my God. I mean, it's just true. I feel uncomfortable. So, where'd you meet this uh, Japanese <laughs> wife of yours? <laughs> well, funny you should ask, Tony. <laughs> I was in college at Tarleton. Her best friend went to college with me, and she came up to visit. And Wow. <laughs> you pounded it out right away, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. Missionary nice. position? Or? I actually found out that night that uh, girls can get pregnant while they're on their period. Oh yeah, wow. like I was, uh, I was young, so I was like, I go to the doctor, and I was like, nah, girls can't get pregnant when they're on their period. And the doctor was like, yeah, what? Yeah, they can. That doesn't wow. make any sense at all. No, they can. It's gonna be the, the either, it's either the beginning or the end, or so. There's like Something a part like where they're like super, right? Anybody yeah. know? Uh, who gives a fuck? So. Yeah, there's a part where it's like super, <laughs> su- you can get like super pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like undoubtedly pregnant. Did you just yeah. think it was sweet and sour sauce or something like that? What was going on? Uh, 
No, I she told me, but I was too drunk to give a shit, so I was okay. like, let's go. Oh, that's good. Okay, you took her back to your place or her place? No, at the party. Oh, it was at the party? Like in a bathroom? No, in our friend's bedroom. Wow, so you had period sex in your friend's bed? <laughs> that's a fucking... <laughs> wow. With an audience. Really? Yeah. Oh my we were God. in college, don't ooh. How many it, people were watching? Uh, it was like... You've seen the Three Stooges, right? Like when you see like one head pop down and one and then one. Oh, yeah. So they heard shit happening, so they just wanted to, ooh. Right. And there we were. Okay. Wow. Very, very interesting stuff. <laughs> very romantic <laughs> story. Did you know they were watching? Uh, I mean, eventually. Like not right away, but. Sometimes I can't believe this show is as successful as it is. I'm like, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> All right, there he goes. Ryan Shields, everybody. Take one of these, my friend. Real handmade leather joke book from the great Bonsai, Adrian Cabazos. Follow him on Instagram. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it has come to that time. We've gone a little bit long tonight for good reason. We had so many regulars and golden ticket winners that we tried to even it out and get as many bucket pulls as possible. But only now, in our final minutes, do we realize the true power of this show. The man that you're about to see holds the record for all-time appearances, all-time new minutes, all-time length of interviews, all-time best sets. The boy is on fire, opening up all around the world for me on this massive theater tour. Duncan Trussell, Tom Segura, Joe Rogan, ladies and gentlemen, the prodigy, the man that we watched go from being a bloated alcoholic to one of the most cold-blooded assassins on planet Earth. I present to you the Memphis Strangler, the Vanilla Gorilla, the Big Red Machine. This is William Lights Out Montgomery. effort to support women, I recently bought a pack of M&Ms that featured only the female M&Ms, brown, purple, and green, but in a confusing twist, they all had nuts. <laughs> this is my impression of Dr. Sean Murphy, the autistic surgeon from the TV show The Good Doctor, ordering a burger from Wendy's. I am a doctor. I am a surgeon. I am a doctor. Have y'all seen that show? It's fucking insane. I used to date a girl who said sex with me was Kafka-esque. And I said, what do you mean? It's like powerful, illogical, sort of this surreal, bizarre experience. And she said, no. It reminds her of when she used to bang Kafka. Okay, that's my... <laughs> What's Kafka? Kafka, a uh, philosopher. Oh. Hilarious. German philosopher. Okay, yeah, I thought that was going to go a little better. I'm sorry. And you expect a lot of people to know about Kafka and the good doctor? <laughs> that was amazing. How about... How, come on, William Montgomery, everybody. Freak of nature. Freak of nature. Unbelievable crushing everywhere all the time strategic execution of murder non-stop William how do you feel <laughs> I'm doing good tonight I, f I shouldn't have but I got another tattoo Tony oh you did Ooh, yeah, yeah I got a uh, speedy Gonzalez Next to my Tasmanian devil, I think I'm going to just end up filling my whole leg up with the Looney Tunes characters. I'm thinking maybe Foghorn Leghorn next. Wow, that is... Maybe Tweety Bird, then maybe Elmer Fudd. Uh, and you're I mean, getting these where exactly on your leg? So I would have to take my underwear off for this. I literally got it right below, or right at the base of my penis. It so hurt. you're getting cartoon character... Wait, What? You said on your leg. Is it on the base of your penis or your leg? No, it's on my leg. Where on your leg? Can you point on your leg to where it is? Yeah, it's like right here. Okay. It's really itchy right now. Okay. And why are you getting cartoon characters on your thigh? Is this a pedophile thing? What's happening here? It's <laughs> terrifying. Take a wild guess, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, <laughs> no. Why are you doing that? I don't know. I like to stand in the mirror when I'm naked and look at them, and it mits, puts a smile on my face. So Wow. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> so you have the Tasmanian Devil and Speedy, Speedy Gonzalez, Gonzalez all yes. right next to your little porky pig that you got there. Uh, Tony saw it. We were in Dania Beach uh, this past weekend. Tony actually saw it. We've been staying in the same hotel room to just save a little money on the thing and he walked in it was so awkward he was in the bathroom and i'm yelling at tony i'm on the king size bed i'm like dude don't walk in i'm naked <laughs> and tony fucking just comes out of the fucking bathroom door real quick it's yep. all my thing <laughs> yep yep we have been on a very very strict budget we have been sharing hotel rooms lately uh, I just love saving money so much that we sleep in the same king bed. We do it uh, Willy Wonka style, 69 style. Yeah, my feet are by your head. Your feet are by my head. We've also been uh, sharing dinners together, which I've enjoyed. Yeah. That. We actually feed each other. We cut we like steak. and I Wait, hold on a second. Who said what? What stupid little bitch ass fucking voice said what? Do you think I'm fucking around, bitch? There's some... Philadelphia chicken heads out there. Hey, at, uh, leave my people alone. <laughs> Sorry, I got excited. How are you Hi. doing, Eleanor? Good, so nice how to you? see you again. Why would you touch me? <laughs> I. Um... <laughs> I assume you're kidding with that do statement, you? Eleanor. Yeah, I how do. How are you? You're I'm so good. fucking funny. I miss you. I miss you too. That's I mean, why I'm I touched lying, you. But I am excited. Oh. Funny one, bitch. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. God, get this bitch out of here! Oh, shit. I'm having the set of my life tonight, bitch! He it has this explosive energy. Oh, boy. So Look at him. sexy. Look at the eyes. I love it. Look at the vicious eyes. Perhaps. Yeah. Some, I don't know. Perhaps he's probably going to start winking any second. We've seen this before. <laughs> Whoa, there it is. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, oh my goodness. I'm just trying to get all the Hispanic people, let me. Yeah, raise your hand, bitch. Holy shit. Oh yeah, she's very Hispanic, oh my goodness. She actually has some glass cleaner in her hand right now, that's incredible. That is unbelievable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, William, what else is going on? Uh, the sweet little dog Gator is doing well. I'm with her all the time. She's uh, peeping and doo dooing all on the carpet, but luckily her butthole is literally the smallest butthole I've ever seen. Well, she must so be a very dude's... honest dog. Because what we found out tonight is that when you lie, your asshole expands. And I basically have a, a black hole for an asshole because I lie so much. Okie dokie. Uh, this dog, <laughs> thank you, Red Man. Uh, this dog, does, where does it sleep? Does it sleep with you? Sleeping like, in the like bed. Like I do when we're on the road together? Sleeping in the bed, yes. And today I was walking around and I started to step on her little body and she made a horrible squeal and I did my leg Can you do an impression up. of the noise that she ah. made? Oh my goodness. Ah. Wow. Yeah, and I looked down, and it's her fucking ass, and I almost killed her, but I'm glad I did my weight up off of her. But yeah, it was so... She sounds like a... Ah! Right. <laughs> Anything else with the dog? What else with the dog, Lee? Not really. I can't walk her outside. She's afraid to walk around outside, so I haven't been able to do that. Really? I put her out on her little harness, and she refuses to walk. She doesn't like walking. No. Wow. Not outside. Is, 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 was she trained by Red Band? <laughs> have you taken uh, your pet to the vet yet? Like, it's, it's a small dog. It almost looks like you shouldn't have this dog. It's so small. You did ha you have it at an illegal time, I do believe. It was like five weeks old or something when you got it, right? I did. I drove 45 minutes away, and the guy had an InfoWars sticker on the bumper <laughs> of the car, and I walk in there, and it's just all these dogs running around everywhere, and these two little half-Asian, half-white girls running around. I'm like, where's y'all's parents? What's going on in here? It was literally, I, I made the business transaction with like this 10-year-old half-white, half-Asian girl. <laughs> literally, it was the weirdest thing. Wow. To be half-white and half-Asian? Or is that... 
I'm huh? just curious what was weird. Is the do- was it a rescue? What do you think was weird you about that? You listen to me, motherfucker. I mean, I seriously, it's like now I feel like the fucking set is tanking and you're really going to fucking hit me with that? Fucking hit me. No, seriously, what do you think sounds strange about me buying a $3,000 long hair chihuahua from a 10-year-old fucking girl? (laughs) Nothing. I'm trying to make up a story right now, bitch! (laughs) I thought it was crazy enough, bitch! I'm feeling dizzy again after two. Yeah, you should. What? You get a lot of exercise. What do you mean I should toes. feel dizzy? Get on those tippy toes. I like it. You Let me do? see. Yeah, it's going to make get Elmer on your fun tippy toes, buff. bitch. Oh, my goodness. Stop calling the guest a okay, bitch. Okay, I'm well. sorry. You were getting weird I don't with care. me at it the makes beginning. Me wet. You could call me bitch. <laughs> William, you have to be nice to the guests. Now I'm fucking sweating up here. I was having a really My ass set. is sweating right now. Yeah, I bet it is. It is what one was of the that? It, is, it is one of the warmest evenings here at the mothership. It appears as though uh, there was a, some AC issues earlier. You ever have issues with your air conditioning? Yeah, who's running this fucking place? <laughs> it's hot. Uh, I'm hot. <laughs> it's, been hot all evening. It's always a pleasure. Nothing goes better than, uh, with comedy than heat. It's a famous old thing. Letterman used to tune up his studio to 100 degrees, right? Isn't that <laughs> I the don't thing? Know. Can I ask him a question? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Did you lose a lot of weight? I'm sorry, I haven't seen you in a while. I'm not being rude. I'm not fat shaming or anything, but did you lose a lot? Usually I don't even notice After weight. After I stopped drinking, I forgot about that. It was fucking, it's somehow been two years yesterday. It was two years Ooh, since I congrats! Left. Drink it did co- and done cocaine, which is great. I would kind of like to be on it right No, not really. It was a horrible nightmare. I think I was about to kill myself, so it's good. I stopped doing it. It was a horrible, depressing nightmare, so it's good. I've been able to stop. I did look. I still have the bag of cocaine, though, from the last night I decided to stop, and I looked at it the other day. Where do you keep it? Still the- a good amount. It's in a Where jacket you pocket. Keep- you-, you still have it. Still have it. If it's ever going to be the end of the world or I get diagnosed with something horrible, I know I'll have a good bag of cocaine without fentanyl in it. So I'm excited about that. <laughs> Excited about the future, Tony. You've tested it. You've tested yeah. this non-fentanyl cocaine. I tested it two years ago last night. Okay. I was <laughs> testing it then. It was a shit ton. I had a lot. Yeah. But it's good. I feel totally much better. But you did lose weight, right? I'm not crazy? Correct. I've okay. been doing the row machine a lot. I'm up to 6,000 meters at a time. I do it okay. every other day. I love it. Are you, but it's been good. You love it. So you fill all of that uh, energy that you used to do, spend drinking and doing cocaine with exercise and by drinking copious amounts of club soda. That's all I drink now. I swear to God, I've had five or six a of lot. the 24-ounce sparkling waters has, already tonight. Okay. He has it's a nervous a, habit. I can't stop. When we're on I the, literally can't stop. When we're on the road, when we're on the road doing, you know, two shows a night he literally might have what would you guess how many glass tr- honest answer how many glasses explain 12 to these people. i think that's 15 very low but it used to be vodka and sprite i would drink that much of alcohol but now so it's good it's just the soda i think it's now. more it's like 25 or, or 30 glasses he it's sucks them down they have to bring pitchers of club soda for him it's actually quite fucking shocking how badly your spinal cord wants you to be drinking but you force it down. Do you think you're ever going to stop being sober? I don't think so, because one of the main reasons I do drink all of that, Tony and I, again, have been staying in the same hotel rooms, and he especially likes it when I TT in the shower, and I, before he gets in, it keeps the ground warm, and I have been, yeah, after 20, 24-ounce soda waters, there's a lot of TT in my little bladder down there, and Tony can get in, and it's really warm, and... It's kind of sparkling a little. I, I stomp around glitter. and I go, yeah. oh, so warm, William. Thank you. Your TT I... made the crown warm. <laughs> 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 Do you think you're ever going to stop TT? I don't think I'm ever going to get stuck. <laughs> TT. <laughs> oh, <no>. Anything <laughs> else, William? Nope, that's it. Okay, nice William Montgomery, everybody. <laughs> 
Eleanor Kerrigan at the Sony Hall in New York City, June 16th and 17th. Listen to her new podcast, What's Up Doc, with the great Jeff Danis. The drawing from Ryan J. Ebelt is in. He draws every single episode all the way from Los Angeles, California. Thank you to the Red Rose, the Yellow Rose, Austin Security Guard Service, Gel Blaster, and Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey. Gel Blaster, available in stores all around the world. Zippix Toothpicks, the great Bones Eye for making the joke books. How about a hand for local artist Chris Rogers, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, for the first time ever, he has drawn the great John Dees, the leader of the Austin Kill Tony Band. A man amazing enough to have provided us with all of these fantastic musicians. Check out johndees.com. That's J-O-N-D-E-A-S.com. Truly one of the best musicians in the world on tour right now doing massive arenas, stadiums, and huge theaters with the great Gary Clark Jr. If you've ever seen Gary Clark Jr. live, you've seen John Dees. They literally have a synergy unmatched by most musicians. How about one more time for the best damn band in the land, the Kill Tony Band. James Atkins on the drums. Paul Deemer on the horns, D Madness on the bass guitar, John Dees on the keys, and Matt Muelling on the electric guitar. Exclusive Kill Tony merch available on your way out. For those of you on the podcast, go to killmerch.com for the new state-of-the-art merch. We're also streaming the 10-year anniversary at moment.co slash killtony. That's available all around the world. A very high-power stream happening live from the ACL Live Theater, June 10th at 8 p.m. Uh, and that is it. Red Band? Check out my new comedy club. It's right next door. It's called the Sunset Strip. Sunsetstripatx.com. Love you. We love you guys. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. is up and running at a thousand miles an hour. It is our official Kill Tony online shop, killmerch.com. T-shirts, hoodies, bones eye made real Texas leather joke books, Kill Tony hats, Kill Tony knit winter hats, beer koozies, bandanas, trucker hats, McVader made posters, some Ryan J. Ebelt art coming in soon, and Kill Tony stickers come with a lot of the purchases that you make. I personally love the Kill Tony NASCAR shirt, the Kill Tony hoodie with the established 2013 along the sleeve. Super cool stuff. We tested all of this out ourselves and made sure that it's very high quality. There's cool a cool KT tag on it with a knife and the logo on everything. Anyway, go to killmerch.com. You know what to do. Support the show. Buy some stuff. Look cool. Tell your friends. You know what's up. <laughs>